All right, welcome to this week's Prophecy Update. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to hit the like and share. And if you haven't subscribed to our Rumble channel, uh, please subscribe to our Rumble Rumble channel. You can just search Sunshine Church on Rumble. So go to rumble.com, search Sunshine Church, and you can find us there. Uh, we do weekly prophecy updates as well as uh, Sunday morning and Wednesday evening uh, services. So you can check us out on Rumble. Um, they want us, they want us to eat bugs, right? This is the global elites, the World Economic Forum, as well as other globalists um, are pushing this idea of eating less meat and going on like a, a bug protein, an insect protein diet, right? This is not super new. It's been out for at least a couple years, if not longer than that, but it's gaining more and more traction. The fact that they're pushing um eating bugs, right? It sounds crazy, but I want to reference uh, where we can find this in the Bible, specifically related to the end times, right? We're living in the last moments of the last days, I believe, the last moments of the church age as we know it, and we're racing toward the tribulation period, and we're actually, uh, the Bible tells us so many things um, that are happening today. It, it explained ahead of time that, hey, the world was going to look like this um, at the end. So that's how uh, we know we are at the end of, of this age. But I want to reference this article. It's from Gateway Pundit. Here's the title. It says, Eat bugs and live in a pod. United Nations to tell first world countries to limit meat consumption in food's first net zero plan. So I want to reference a couple of uh, quotes from this article and then uh, go look to God's word and see what the word has to say. So here's the first part of the article. It says, The climate change zealots or communists, are not only coming for your gas-powered vehicles, they want to destroy the cattle and farming industry under the guise of reducing, reducing carbon emissions with a net zero plan. And let me just insert this story in there real quick. Uh, um, a few years ago, I was at a wedding uh, party, like the party before the, I can't remember what it's called, the, the, the Dinner that you have after you practice for the wedding, the day before the wedding. I can't remember what it's called. But anyways, I was talking to a guy there uh, in our state, and I live in New Mexico, and he was a farmer, and he was telling me um, the government, and he has a, quite a bit of land, and he said the government actually pays him to let his land lay fallow, to, to, to not farm his land and not put cattle on his land. And I was asking him why, and he said it, it had to do with what, what they called climate change. He didn't believe it, but he was like, the government sends me a check every month or ho however often um, to just leave my land alone. Kind of on the same lines as what we're talking about here. As we read a few of these things, we're going to see that. It says the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, the FAO, if you want to remember that term, we'll probably hear more about it um, in, the, in the coming months and, and weeks and years. It is, it is expected to roll out its food guidance for first world countries in an effort to reduce carbon emissions. So they're going to give food guidance. Listen, we don't need food guidance, thank you, but they're going to give food guidance to reduce carbon emissions, right? Their whole, the whole story that they're giving us that's not true is that um, farming and meat and, and, and producing or raising cattle and doing that, it's bad for the environment. It's bad for the climate. So we have to cut it down or in, eliminate it in order to save the planet, right? So that's the storyline. So let me read a little bit more from this article. And it goes on and it quotes this uh, meeting, the United Nations meeting that's going to happen in Dubai. And that's actually going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be Thursday. Um, and they're going to roll out this plan tomorrow. It says, the so, so they want to reduce farming, reduce the consumption of meat, okay, in first world countries. And then after it, it quotes um, a big part of the section from the what they're going to say at the COP28 meeting, it says the globalists and freaks in the left-wing media are trying to convince people to eat bugs. So don't eat meat because it'll save the planet. Eat bugs and you'll be doing your part to save the planet. The globalists are pushing for commoners to eat bugs, weeds, and synthetic meat because bugs consume fewer resources than traditional livestock. The World Economic Forum recently promoted the EU's new plan to use mealworms in food in their bid to reduce meat consumption. So again, this isn't brand new. I know this idea of eating bugs and using worms and bug protein 
in our food has been around for at least a few years and it's getting more and more popular. But the reason I wanted to look at it today is because the Bible talks about it or it references something in the last days that totally could be this. Let me say it like that. But I want to pause right here and say this first because uh, they're using climate change as the, the, the fear part of it, right? To get us to do what they want, which is eat bugs and not meat. Um, and so be afraid of this. Uh, in order to solve this issue over here, we need you to do this. And then the result is going to be that they have control over us. Because why? If, we're, if, if, if they control the food supply, they control the people, right? And this is a, a way for them to control the food supply. But I want to start with this, this whole idea of climate change and, and us being afraid of it. Listen, if you are a Bible-believing Christian, you don't have to be afraid of climate change at all, ever. It's not even a thing. And I'm not saying the climate doesn't change. Here's what I'm saying. The Bible tells us history in advance, or it's prophecy, right? God knows history in advance. It tells us the world that we live in right now is not going to be destroyed by people. Okay, our, our the planet Earth that we live on live in right now will be will stay here just like it is right now, and we'll be able to do all the things on it that we can do now from until the end of the church age, into the tribulation period, into the uh, thousand year reign of Christ. Listen, the Earth won't be destroyed until God actually destroys it. He's the one that's going to do the most harm to this earth. And actually, if you read Revelation chapter 6 through 19, you see that God is the one um, that causes, causes destruction. He turns all the water to blood. He causes meteors to rain down on the earth. He, there's earthquakes. There's, volcan there's all kinds of things that happen as judgments from God on this earth during the tribulation period that will be far, 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 far greater than anything that people have ever done to change the climate. So here's what I'm saying. The climate change propaganda is totally a lie. Please don't be afraid of it. I'm just going to reference, uh, uh, this is Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. And so you don't, I mean, I said this is for Christians, but really you don't even have to be a Christian to believe what I'm saying. Just read the Bible. I want you to become a Christian, but... Um, this, this is the truth. This is what God says. This is Genesis 8, 22, and I want to reference a few other things. It says straight up, this is what it says, while the earth remains, while the earth is still here, look, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. There's going to be day and night. There's going to be seasons. There's going to be uh, the harvest, the planting seasons. That's still going to happen. Right, farming's not going to go away while the earth remains. That's the word of God right there. And then I also did want to reference, and I, I just started talking about it. We know the earth isn't going to be destroyed by people because of God's prophetic plan for the future. So again, the seven-year tribulation period happens on this earth as we know it. After the seven-year tribulation period, the thousand-year reign of Christ. So now Revelation chapter twenty. That happens on this earth. Yes, God, uh, God begins to restore the earth even during that time while Jesus Christ is ruling and reigning from uh, the throne of David in Jerusalem, right? God begins to restore the earth and, and, and the animal kingdom is restored and people are restored during that time. But it happens, it happens on this earth, right? It's not till the new heavens and the new earth that God destroys the earth as we know it and then do, does new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem, and that's on into eternity. But so from Bible prophecy, from Genesis 8, 22, we know 100% the earth is not going to go anywhere because of climate change. So please don't, uh, don't believe those guys. Let me, let me say this. I want to read this too. This is Zechariah 14. And here, here's what I'm, I, I skipped over this just now, but listen, the second coming of Jesus Christ happens on this earth, on this planet, right? He's, where is he coming back to? The planet earth. It's still here. Okay. This is Zechariah 14 verses three and four. Jesus coming back at the second coming. It says, then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations, the battle of Armageddon, as he fights in the day of battle. Verse 4, and in the day and in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. So again, 
on planet Earth in Jerusalem, Mount of Olives. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, making a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half of it toward the south. So again, we know the Earth is going gonna, is gonna to be here. So they're using climate change to try to get us to be afraid to do what they want us to do. Here's more quotes from the article. Uh, it says this, Livestock around the world is responsible for around 14.5% of all greenhouse gas emissions relating to human activity. The need for land, whether grazing animals or growing crops to feed animals, is the single greatest driver of deforestation with major consequences for biodiversity loss, the paper says. So again, that's the lie to get you to be afraid so they can control you. That's Remember the... Um, the Antichrist system is what's being set up before us, and that's all about control, right? It's this system that's going to be so controlling over the entire population of the earth that uh, the Antichrist, one man, will actually be able to monitor uh, whether or not people have the mark of the beast related to them buying or selling or taking part in the economy. So the whole system that's being set up right now with central bank digital currency, the mindset of people that they're, they're doing on the population where they're trying to get us to believe that, hey, you have to listen to the government in order to buy or sell masks and vaccines. Remember that when they said you can't go to the store without those things. It's all setting up the Antichrist infrastructure for his system, which is going to be in the future uh, during the seven-year tribulation period, which, by the way, we are not in yet. And the reason we know we're not in the 70th week of Daniel, one of the reasons is because the Daniel 9, 27 covenant has not been signed, right? So there's some people that are looking at Matthew 24 going, look, we're in the, the tribulation period right now. We're not. We know we're not, that because the Antichrist has not been revealed because the restrainer's still here, which is the Holy Spirit, as it operates in the church today, and the Antichrist covenant that he signs with the many, or uh, the Jews, hasn't happened yet. Those are just two, two main reasons that we're not in the trib yet. The church, the Bible tells us, is going to miss the tribulation period because our bridegroom, Jesus, is going to come and, and rapture us out of here before the time of God's wrath on this earth. So here's another article. It says, uh, same, same topic, a few different details. It says, UN demands Americans drastically reduce meat consumption to meet WEF climate goals. And it has a picture of our good buddy Klaus Schwab. I don't know if you can see that. And another guy on there. Um, I think that's the UN leader uh, shaking hands, working together on this. So great. Two guys that want to control the planet working together. It says the FAO, which is the Food and Agriculture Organization again, um, will demand that America and other nations that overconsume meat limit their meat consumption to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and fight climate change. The failure of leading, this is now this is a quote from uh, one of the leaders, the failure of leading meat and dairy companies to reduce emissions underlines the urgent need for more policy focus on the food and agriculture sector. Food systems emissions deserve a place at the top of the table alongside energy and transport as they represent an estimated third of greenhouse gas emissions and 40% of methane, he continued. So uh, again, they're, they want, they're using climate change to push their agenda, which ultimately is the bottom line, it's Satan setting up his system for his guy that's about to be revealed to the world pretty soon. There was another uh, reference to an article that says, just recently, Irish, the Irish government forced farmers, it says, to slaughter up to 41,000 cows to meet the country's new regulations on nitrates, limits to reduce pollution and fight climate change. We also saw a few months ago that the Dutch farmers were revolting and resisting and, and um coming against their government for doing the same kind of things, for basically for making farming there um, almost impossible because they made all these rules that went along with this stuff. So um, it says this regarding the 41,000 cows in Ireland. It says farmers are faced with three options to comply with the restrictions, to increase the amount of land they own, to find an expensive animal waste removal service, or to call their herds. And so obviously the the most cost-effective thing for them right in the moment would be to call their herds or kill a whole bunch of 
cows. It says, this comes as the UN called on the people to ditch animal-based diets and opt for plant-based foods and, listen, insect protein as recommended by the WEF, the World Economic Forum. Basically, we know if the World Economic Forum recommends it, we want to do pretty much the opposite of what they recommend. They tell us to eat bugs and stop eating meat. Keep eating meat. It's good for you. It's got protein. Hamburgers are good. I want, so where does the Bible tell us um, about eating bugs and, 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 and not eating meat in the last days? Um, this is 1 Timothy Chapter 4, verses, I'm going to read like 1 through 4 or so. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, here's what it says. Now, in, now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. So latter times, last days, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Here's verse 3, listen. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So again, they're, they're commanding to abstain from certain foods. And that's, it's interesting that the word foods there is translated in the King James Version as meats. I just read from the New King James. And let me, let me say this right off the bat. The Bible wasn't written in English, so we always want to go back to the original Greek meaning of it. So it's just funny that it's translated as meats in the King James. And now we're seeing today that uh, they're telling us, hey, don't eat meat. Or they're saying, abstain from eating these foods because uh, it's going to hurt the planet. And in this verse in the last days in 1 Timothy chapter 4, he's saying some are going to command to abstain from foods which God made to be received with Thanksgiving, the word abstained literally means to be distant from, right? Be distant from eating meat, they're saying. Or it's a type of fasting that limits certain types of foods, right? So you can eat these foods over here, but not these foods in context. And so really, really interesting to me that, that that's in there, that the word of God tells us ahead of time, hey, this is what it's going to look like in the last days. And so could this be a fulfillment of verse 4 in Timothy or verse 3 in 1 Timothy 4, it could be. I can't, we can't say for sure 100% that it is, but it seems like it's lining up with everything else that's happening right now um, where they're doing this to put us in a place where they can control us so they can do uh, their, their agenda, the 2030 agenda. Um, by the way, let me, excuse me, let me throw this in there. I saw an awesome video a couple months ago by Lee Brainerd. So if you don't follow Lee Brainerd, check him out. He's on Rumble and on YouTube. And I think his, his platform is called Sooth Keep. But Lee Brainerd did an awesome video on why he thinks 2030 is not the date of the second coming because a lot of people are saying 2030 seems to line up with Jesus' second coming because it's about 2,000 years after the uh, the cross of Jesus Christ, and something happens every 2,000 years biblically, prophetically. But he said that makes, it makes more sense that if 2030 is the three and a half year mark in the tribulation period, and he gives some reasons why, and I'm just throwing that out there because when I watched it, I thought, oh my gosh, man, that, it makes sense what he's saying. He's presenting it as a theory, right? None of us know for sure when the rapture is going to happen, when the, all the end time stuff is going to happen, right? Um, but we're seeing the stage being set for those things. So his, his thoughts and take on that was really interesting. So if you can, uh, check that out. So um, just wanted to, to touch on the insect, eat bugs, don't eat meat thing, because it's another sign that Jesus is coming soon. Listen, church, don't, don't fall asleep. Don't be lulled back into a sense of normalcy. Even though the world's gone crazy, Satan wants us to think this is normal, right? He's getting us so used to insane things happening that we can be kind of just going like, okay, well, another crazy thing happened. I guess that's normal. It's not normal. It's a sign that our Lord and Savior is coming back for his church any moment now. And so be ready for the return of Christ. Look up and lift up your head because his re our redemption draws near. The only way to be ready. So if you're not a Christian, the only way to go in the rapture and to not stay on this earth during the tribulation period and to not go to hell when you die is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So if you're watching this and you don't know Jesus and you've not received forgiveness of sins through his sacrifice 
on the cross and you've not said, God, I'm a sinner, I need a savior, listen, right now is your moment of salvation. The Bible says that you're a sinner. Your sin separates you from a holy, righteous God and there's nothing you can do to, to intervene in that. We're separated from God. But it says Jesus is our mediator, and he's the only mediator, the one that can come in between us and God and make a way for us to be declared righteous or make a way for you to be saved. And so if you want to say, I'm a sinner, I need a savior, I believe Jesus is my savior, and he's the only way to salvation, right where you are, pray this prayer. Just right where you're sitting, just say these words to God in your heart, to him. Just pray this, pray, dear Heavenly Father, God, I am a sinner. I do need a savior. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead, that he ascended to heaven, and that he's coming back again one day. Please come into my heart and be my Lord and be my Savior. I believe in the truth of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, congratulations. That's the best decision you can make in the universe. Get a Bible, begin to read it, begin to know who God is and how he wants you to live. Get plugged into a Bible teaching church. If you need help with that, send me a message and I could do my best to help you um, and guide you in that and pray for you. Hey, if you're a Christian already, be ready for the return of Christ by being about your father's business and living a holy life where we're looking for him to return. So we want to be busy when he does return. So God bless you guys again. Please share this. Please uh, like and share it. Please get the word out. Please put any questions or comments in the comments section and uh, until next time so uh, next week Wednesdays at noon we'll do every, uh, prophecy updates every week at that time so God bless you guys we'll see you then